What band can you send back to your life? What band? <coughs> of course, I'm old, I have to be the Stones. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many bands that made sense in my life. I mean, music is a huge part of my life. But yeah, I think the Stones, pretty much. Think about when I was born, 60, what, 64. Yeah, they were, they were playing hard then. <coughs> They're still playing hard now. Kind of crazy, isn't it? But there's so many, there's so much great music that's a massive influence on me. The soundtrack of my life, it makes it sound like it follows a particular album or a path. It doesn't. I mean, it was a long time, it was probably, you know, Biggie and Stooges, or it was um, some really scary heroin bags, but that's something. <laughs> right, you got somebody? Um, yeah. A lot of the genre shows have the themes of found family and stuff like that as well. Um, but your characters are nearly always on the outside of the film family. Well, I'm usually there to kill somebody, so... Yeah. Well, you normally help in a lot of ways, and it, but it's, it's... Is that a, a particular character you like to play to always? It's got nothing to do with me. It's just a whole bunch of writers that I know really well. You know, it's season two. What should we do? Oh, let's write a whole bunch of stuff and give it to Mark and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> See it in the press after Take a little lull in your season two. Let's get Mark in. Of course, you know, throw a little angle. I was supposed to do one episode of, of Supernatural, really. Stayed there for eight years. It's a long time. Long time. Not long enough? Yeah, it was way long enough, trust me. Did you see season 12? It was way too long. Well, Switcher Question to thank you. I'm getting married next year, so thank you for that, Mark. Oh, hold on a second. No, I'm not taking that. Hold on. You're signing, right? Hello. 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 We get married because you're getting married. We love, we love the fact that we can be a backdrop to what it is that you enjoy, where it connects you guys, or it does whatever, or you find something in it. But, you did it. So, you know, almost every day, oh, Supernatural saved my life. And when I, you saved your life, you're just happy to have been a pleasant part of it and something that you can attach to or make friends with or be that. We don't, we don't change the world, we just try to leave a little niceness behind us. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. It's really important to know that. I mean, a lot of people deal with mental health issues on a continuous basis. I do, my wife does, I do Jared's very vocal about his. Blah, 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 right? But no, nobody's superhuman anymore. Nobody gets out of this alive. <laughs> you know, it's the way it is. And there's a lot more in the last couple of years that made everything a hundred times worse than it would be. And if you're struggling, and you really are struggling, you know, first of all, there's no shame in getting help. You know, we all have, we all should, you know, and hang on to your friends. But, you know, a lot of mental health issues, you don't want to hang on to your friends. You don't want to reach out, you don't want to do those things. So you check in on each other and you care about each other and you do the best you can by each other. But remember, the things that you do, even if even if they are connected to a show you like, or that's the thing that's giving you the idea of a door or a way through something, it's still you that did it. If you did that, there's a distinct possibility you can do it again. And that's the truth. The truth is if you can survive toughest times when you do that, there's a really good possibility you should be able to do it again. And if you're struggling with that, get some help. There's no shame in it. There's no, you know, everybody needs help sometimes. Nobody should have to go through this life alone in that context. That's why you two should be some parts of that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We're, we're good for time. Like next. <laughs> Out of all the shows you've been on, what was your favourite? Uh, whatever show I happen to be on is usually my favourite. <laughs> um, honestly, seriously, there's so many that I've enjoyed. But the lovely thing is, the things I've loved the most tend to be the things that you guys have, have loved the most. It's weird. It works that way. The stuff I get most attached to, I don't always go into something supposed to being in the whole thing. I usually show up in something supposed to be a piece of thing. Of the thing, I'm a little bit of the thing, and then um, suddenly I'm there for two years and three years, <laughs> four years and five years. I always get Mark back. 
So those are the things I most enjoy. Doom Patrol is, is a joyous experience for me. It is absolutely fantastic. The actors are extraordinary. Hey, you. I've seen that one. Um, the actors are phenomenal. If you don't know who's in it, go look it up, you lazy people. <laughs> it's been on for three years. You have no excuse. Um, it's, it's phenomenal writing. It's, it, I hate where things are going with woke culture. I just do. It's sorry if it offends you in any way. Tough. Um, but I don't like superficial wokeness. There is lots of issues that we have that need dealing with. There's lots of things that have to be changed and stopped and addressed that involve hatred and, 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 and nastiness and, and despicable behavior and these things. All these things do need to be addressed. And as a society, we should do so. But the idea of writing a television show that covers every single aspect of how everybody feels at all times without offending a single person on the planet or any other planet um, <laughs> is insane. It is rubbish. It makes for rubbish. We, we, we want points of view, contrary points of view. We want to, you know, we want to be challenged mentally and emotionally. We want to have, you know, something that. If, if you don't relate to it, you watch something else. If you do relate to it, you watch that. That's always been the way it should be. And I think the weird thing about Tomb Patrol is the writing staff is so insanely diverse <laughs> that you just ended up with, oh, that's probably what the model of woke should have been in the first place, which is just hire good people who tell interesting stories that come from different you know, uh, standpoints in different places. And that's why I love the show so much, because there's so much contribution going on from so many different types of people. And those of you that follow Doom Patrol writers and stuff, you'll see that. They're very disparate personalities, and they're all right, and they all love what they're doing. And it's just a joy to get a script and go, you know, wow, I get to say, oh, I get to say the C word of my first word on television. <laughs> I actually had to make an email. I was like, God, I get to say the, excuse, I get to say the C word? I've been avoiding this for like 35 years at this point. It's not a great word unless used absolutely perfectly in perfect timing with the utmost of love and affection. It doesn't work as, it doesn't work as something nasty to say about somebody, it, 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 it should be somewhat comedic, it's very hard to pull that off, it can't be done in America. No American can say the same word and without feeling guilty, so it just ruins it, it's better. But there's a few people, the British Isles and Ireland, who have been able to uh, uh, pull that off and you're like, it may make your ears burn a little bit, but it's funny as hell. So I get to say it as the first line on Doom Patrol, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, so it's Jeremy, I'm like, I'm not saying the C word on television, because hold on a second, yeah, it's in the script. <laughs> I felt bad. I was just like, okay, it fits. And it's just like, but uh, yeah, that was written by, written by a girl. I think that was funny. <laughs> I was like, yeah, what do you want? Bathroom's <laughs> out. You mentioned that uh, you, uh, your dad was an actor as well. Was he a driving force behind you? Was it nice work? Was my dad a driving force behind I don't think so. I think he was very empathetic about what I did, but I was a musician and he was an actor. He was not very different, but we just sort of did it. We had a very, very, very weird relationship when I was young. Not a great relationship, but that sort of fixed itself when we, you know, we were both living in America. And I'd move and we were always rented, so I'd, I'd move and then find him a place that was next to me. It was just weird. It just went on for years and we ended up teaching together and acting together and we stuff together. I used the older me in Doctor Who. Um, I played the younger him in, in CIS. Uh, we played older and younger version of Nemo and uh, Mysterious Islands. I mean, just loads of stuff. I've directed him. But yeah, he was fun. He, he, was, he died, I think he was 86 when he died, or close to 86 when he died. He worked till he was 85, so it didn't really suck. You know what I mean? It was like, I wouldn't have wished him an extra minute. I think he thought he was a pirate in the last few months of his life, which was fun. Kind of scary, because he was scaring the hell out of people who were working with him. But, um, but yeah, he, you know, he loved doing it. He, I don't think he had as much joy in it as I did. It was hard, I think it was always harder for him since he left the Royal Shakespeare Company in the 60s and 70s. That was his joy. And everything else was, I don't think it was quite as joyous. And I think genre stuff was joyous for him. So doing Star Trek and doing those things, he made friends there and he really enjoyed the, the telling of those stories as I did. So I think that's what it's about. It's hard to say, I miss my dad, I wish 
I'm going, I'm going to Wales, not Wales, would be a bit more conversation. <laughs> it's like, it just doesn't have to be there. But, uh, I like to feel, you know, a little bit of a hand in this. But, yeah, would you go up with someone on the way front? Hi, Mark. Where are you? Oh, there. Oh, Crowley, or oh, Fergus. It's not Fergus. How dumb do you have to be to think of Fergus, who is a four foot three in Scottish crafter? The ginger hair is me. It doesn't really work like that. It's because the writers were too lazy to follow the rules and canon. Which is why we ended up with the wonderful Ruth Cobb mother. It's not wooing. We can woo the first part. The second part of that sentence is ridiculous. She should have been playing my ex-wife. She would have been absolutely genius and run for about 10 years. It was the animosity of the world. can't have a mother. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Never did, never will. It's kind of ridiculous. But I, she played the hell out of it, and I just played it as well. Everyone else has a mother. Why can't I? The crown doesn't have a mother, it doesn't make any sense at all. Think that. There's no sense in me being attached to her. Well, it's the demonized version of Fergus. Well, then it's not Fergus, it's the So, next, you got going to get a good questions again now? So, like, posturing at me? I'm, I'm writing up there. Yeah. You're right, what do you want? So, with everything that happened in the end, are you with, um, the end of what? Um, when you, with you end up abruptly. Uh, 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 when I ended, no, well, hey, well, no. Um, if you went to the back for the last episode, would you t- uh, would you have said yes? And they didn't ask me. They didn't ask you. No. Oh. Oh. Probably afraid I'd say no. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean they would have asked me. I can't, can't answer hypothetical questions. They did not ask me. Um, and, uh, but my fun was watching every year when they were being asked when is Mark Shepard coming back. So that was kind of. <laughs> so, so, I'm seeing it squirming away, going, oh, but you died such a magnificent death. It would be so strange to know it. <laughs> Stop waving that puppet in the air. <laughs> Mark, we're just coming up to half past now. We're just coming up to Hereford's day. No, we're not going <laughs> We can just get. We're good, sit there, enjoy. Oh. Hey, man, <laughs> Yes. Um, You've been looking at me for 20 minutes. Stop being, stop standing there. Just tell me the question. Tell me the question. It's my first Comic Con. It is? Yeah, my first ever Comic Con. Welcome. Have you made friends yet? Uh, not quite yet. You will now you're really yeah. stuck. You're going to make friends. <laughs> not gonna, there might be some good friends in the pub, and not all of them will be good, I promise you. Well, right? you'd be a terrible friend, wouldn't you? Wow. You'd be a good friend or a terrible friend? Wow. I don't know, is she a good friend? Well, you can always share. Yeah. <laughs> I've also come by myself, so it's a bit of a big thing. Well, we understand that, don't we? Yes? Yeah. 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 You're welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> Very brave. Brave of you to do it. Are you enjoying it this far? Yeah. yeah. Especially you. Oh. <laughs> don't get fun. You'll get over it. How long does it, how long does it take to get over me? A year or two? Um, you know, I can tell you I'm not here. Oh, well, we, I appreciate you. you will, just if you you open up like that, people tend to gravitate towards you, unless you're a serial killer. <laughs> it uses a lot of other serial killers, so you'll make friends anyway. So, my question is um, I've seen a lot of um, videos on YouTube of all of the fans singing Carry On My Wayward Son. Yeah, so yes. I was wondering if. No, I'm not going to sing it. No, no, no. Do you want to? No, no, no. Please. Why? Because I want to. Do 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 we're not going to take up the last minute and a half of my panel <laughs> and sing it, Carry On My Wayward Son. We all know how it goes, right? <laughs> yeah. You can sing it too, so we're not going to sing it. We're not going to do that. Right, Race? Absolutely, absolutely. Really. Because we have, we have time for like, how many, how many we've got? We literally have about two or three minutes left. Okay, that's the reason I'm, I'm so glad that you love it. I played drums so many times. Is there anybody else asking a question? Yeah, always. Oh, uh, yeah, when you want to talk about Speaking of singing, what would Crowley sing about? Mr. Crowley, <laughs> Well, you heard me singing Changes. 
You got terrible memory. In the season eight, singing Bowie. About his life, like what would be the focus that he would sing. How do you get to dictate what I feel like singing about my character's life? God damn, do your own fan fiction. That's the rule, by the way. What? If you were going to cosplay, who would you dress as? Uh, this is what I do, so I dress up for Dress up like a prat. What? <laughs> it takes me to die. Dress up like a prat. Is that what you said to me? That's literally what you said to me. So, fashion police coming down the aisle. Do you remember what we said earlier? How many fights do you see? <laughs> Is that your hair? It is now, yes. Who? Uh, we don't care about that. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much. It was really nice. I can't wait till you want to take the photographs. <laughs> what do I dress? I've actually got the worst Halloween costume of all time because I am such a twat. <laughs> dressing up, my kids get so embarrassed. I have an eye patch and a t shirt that says pirate. It's <laughs> oh, my costume. Anyone else? There's a gentleman over here. He said, Yeah, who do you want, sir? And he wants to know. I've no idea you lost children, sorry. His wife, his wife broke his leg and he couldn't come. His wife broke his leg. <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's a <laughs> So he can't come, his wife broke his leg. <laughs> <laughs> He basically wants to know if you've been in season four, do you have Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's right. I mean, I'm immortal. I was going to be playing Constantine in Doom Patrol, so you can't kill Constantine, but kill himself. Because you might do, you never know. He's kind of depressed. I'll no, be happy about that. It's, it's good. Hi there. Um, I have this question for the other music ones. I was wondering if you could play in any band from history, play any track from any other band, what would you choose? You see, I don't, I don't play like that. I've always been in bands that wrote material for no million cover bands. Um, the closest is messing around with Alan Swain and doing that stuff. But quite honestly, I've, you know, I made 30 odd records in my musical career and you know, I've done John Peel sessions. And there's one on tour in 17 after I finished season 12 on tour with Robin Hitchcock. So I was playing here and I was playing in the States with him. And I love it. And that's stuff I worked on since the 80s. So I have my own music that I play. You know, so I love a lot of music. There's a lot of music I play along to. That's how I learned to play, it was by playing along to music that I like. But um, I don't think that's, if I'd ever wished I had done, so I mean, there's some, there are some great drumming tracks. But uh, I, I like, I love being in a band and I love being in, in writing scenarios and creating something in the process of recording and the process of touring and all that stuff. So that's where my joy comes from. So my interpretive art is, you know, they give me dialogue and scenarios and scenes and backstories in what I do. In one art and the other art, I tend to get to write what I want to write and play what I want to play. So it's kind of fun that way. Is that your question? Okay. Wow, I answered the question. Mark, Mark we really are right. Okay, have we got one more. <laughs> Anyone want to be yourself? What do you think? Oh, okay. Is it a good question? Um, I was just going to ask, out of all the things that fans, gift-wise, that fans send you, what's the strangest thing you've ever received? <laughs> I'll tell you something. I've had some wonderful, wonderful gifts. Gifts to myself, gifts, gifts to my daughter. Gifts to my sons, uh, certain times. Gifts to my wife, definitely. Minstrels. <laughs> I do like bacon fries. Yeah, we tried to buy bacon fries and minstrels for you at uh, Crossroads, but every shop in the area had completely sold out. Because I've been Within an hour of you arriving. <laughs> because I've been 20 bags of bacon fries. Because <laughs> people beat you to it. I know that's the thing. And I, and I love it. But it's, it's not about the things. It's not about the things. It's the fact that anybody would take time. Or put a little love into it. I don't need something from you 
to to in, enjoy you. If you ever see anybody who you like what they do, seriously love them, and they're in front of you, it doesn't matter where you are. If you go up to them and you really like what they do, and they say, and you say to them, um, "I really enjoy your work. Thank you very much." And you do that honestly, you'll get the most incredible responses because it's it's what we love to hear. That's the most important thing. The gifts are lovely. You know, really, do I want another frame velvet picture of me? I mean, uh, in a compromising position with that uh, angel. So I had a, a velvet painting of the two of us in a bath, which I thought was It was really good, too. It wasn't like you know, stick figures. It was like, man, hey, this is like the velvet Elvis thing. It's like, it's really cool. So it, it does. Anyway, look, to, to, to summarize, it's a great question. Um, Mark, we really Shut up. Stop talking. Excuse me. You stop. Me. Yes. Hey, Reese. Can you stop talking for about five seconds? <laughs> so I was going to say to wrap this up. Thank you for being here. As I said, we travel to come see you guys because we don't get to be with you when we make what it is that we do. We're lucky enough to travel the world and do that. It is a really tough world out there. It's a really tough time right, right now. Please. Be as kind as you can to each other. It does make a difference. It really does make a difference. A lot of people are struggling really, really hard with what's going on. I want to thank you all for being here. It is an absolute joy to come and see you guys whenever I can. And uh, yeah, thank you for my life. You've made it an awful lot more interesting. <laughs> <laughs>